Hi, this is Dudley Moore from Remote Places, New Zealand. And we're off on another scenic coastal detour, this time along Highway 45, from New Plymouth to Harara, around the west coast. This is commonly referred to as the Surf Highway. And given that there are 29 roads that give ocean access along this rugged coast, all in 100 k's, you can see why. First, I have to give a disclaimer. My language skills are not great, and here in Taranaki, a lot of Māori words will pop up. So please understand that what you hear me say is not likely to be the correct pronunciation. Also, if you're after more information, my practice is to list some relevant websites at the end of my description, for which you need to view YouTube on a computer to access. Taranaki is a special part of New Zealand, considered a bit hard to get to, but it is well worth the trip. You have three road options to get there, from the north on Highway 3 over Mount Messenger, from the east along New Zealand's Forgotten Highway, which we covered in two of my early vids. Those I will link at the end. And from the south you come through Wanganui, which is the more mundane of the three road options. After spending a peaceful night in the car park at Tupuri Gardens in New Plymouth, we head west towards Cape Egmont, the most western point of the Taranaki Bulge. As our detour starts, we enjoy great views of Mount Taranaki. Then we drop down towards the coast. Paratutu Rock and the old New Plymouth Power Station chimney focus our view towards Port Taranaki. That chimney certainly stands out. At 200 metres high, it is visible 100 k's up the coast. However, it has not been used since the power station was decommissioned back in 2008. We turn into Centennial Drive heading west. This takes us past the spectacular Paratutu Rock, which has a steep, in places roped, climb to the top. It is a great place to view awesome sunrises. We are now alongside the Tasman Sea, which will be our close companion for the rest of the trip. Pulling into one of the beach access car parks, here slightly elevated, we readily see the reefs and rocks that guard the northwest approach to Port Taranaki. Here we spot a few surfers finishing their breakfast while keeping an eye on the surf down below. As we leave New Plymouth, Mount Taranaki pops into view again. This will be viewed all day from different places as we travel around it and we get to understand why it is considered the heart of Taranaki. It certainly is central and a highly visible reference point when the weather allows that. Soon we drive into Corbett Park, a popular family destination. It is on the outskirts of Oakura, the first of several beach communities scattered along the coast road that we will pass through or by today. We're now heading out to the wreck of the SS Garlock, which you can access from Weld Park or Timaru Road. We choose the latter as it is a beautiful drive through predominantly dairy farms. They remind me a bit of Europe. You actually drive between the farm buildings, milking shed on the left, implement sheds on the right. Go slow as sometimes you have to open electric fence strung across the road. Easy to do when no cars are crossing. Just practice country rules. Leave the gate as you found it, open or closed. Remember this is a working farm, so respect the farmer's livelihood and property. At the road end, it is an easy walk to the beach along the marked access way through the farmer's pasture. The day we did it was through the happily grazing dairy herd, so we had to be on the watch for fresh cow pats. The SS Garlock ended up here on the Timaru Reef one stormy night in early 1903. In the light of day, it was discovered to be stuck fast with 
with its bottom torn open, so here it stayed. Today only a portion of the bower remains easily visible, where 100 years of waves have pushed it close to shore. Okato, an inland town, comes next. Here you can turn left up towards the mountain route, or right as we do to follow the coast. There are a number of cafes here if your tank needs to be topped up, and there is also a short scenic walk up the nearby river, the Stony River Walkway. Next we drop into the Cape Egmont Boat Club, down at the end of Bailey Road. Along with a handy boat ramp, they have a lighthouse museum. Check out their website for more info, as it's not always open through the week. Then we travel along Coast Road, enjoying the views and easy beach access. Then down Cape Road to the actual Cape Egmont Lighthouse, which since 1881 has been beaming out a light each night to make our mariners' lives safer. Rejoining the Surf Highway, any travellers with an interest in New Zealand history should make a small detour up Parihaka Road on our left. It will take you to the Maori village of Parihaka. This extract from their website provides a concise summary, and I quote, The people resisted the confiscation of lands using non-violence. Still the village, with a population of several thousand people, was invaded by an army of colonial troops in November 1881, and occupied for several years. Hundreds were imprisoned in the South Island for acts of civil disobedience, but given criminal sentences. Our community still exists today, and with it are the traditions of our ancestors. Together we are focused on rebuilding a sustainable and healthy community. End of quote. For those inquiring minds among us, a good place to get insight into the troubled early years of Taranaki is back in New Plymouth on the grounds of the Taranaki Cathedral Church of St Mary. There is a large basket looking building, Te Wari Honga, the house that binds. It houses a range of visual stories from back during these troubled times. Personally I find this building on the outside looks a bit strange. But go inside and spend some time. You will discover it is a very special place, well worth visiting. Soon we arrive in Opanaki, which has been made famous by being the birthplace of New Zealand group's great runner Peter Snell, a range of awesome surf destinations, safe swimming beaches, Today it has a variety of street art. The buildings come neglected, okay, under renovation and just plain fabulous. In the last category is the McGregor's building, housing a good cafe, the Arty Tarts, and the Emporium. The Emporium is an art focused shop which is much more than just an art studio. One of the artists who works here obviously loves flowers and she makes them leap out of her canvases. It is a gallery you are likely to linger in and maybe exit with a thinner wallet. Feeling more energetic? Or maybe you have children you need to exercise. They have great walking and bike trail options, uh, as well as fun playgrounds. These you can do before or after a swim or surf, and follow it up with a run, and attempt to do a sub four minute mile, and make Peter Snell proud. Then the road goes through some more southern Taranaki farms, finishing up in Hara, ending a quite different and special detour. We trust you enjoyed this Remote Places New Zealand video, one of our detour series, getting out of your car 
onto a beach. Sure puts a smile on your dial, so get out there and do it. Please subscribe and ring the bell, as it greatly assists us with the development of this channel. You have a great day, and thank you. Dudley Moore at Remote Places New Zealand.